clicks on this video and subscribes to my channel, you have no idea how much that means to me. Today, I am introducing you to one of my favorite yoga instructors, Nikki, from Core Power Yoga. We're gonna do a Q&A, we're gonna show you some yoga workouts with weights, we're gonna show you some poses, and answer questions that have been asked to me on my Snapchat, my Instagram, and Twitter. I talk to you guys all the time about how I love yoga so much and how it's truly changed my life, and it's actually given me a booty. We, <laughs> yoga booty is a thing. We call it yoga booty, and it is real, and we are gonna show you how to get one too. So please stay tuned for this video. I hope you guys enjoy. So Nikki, tell me, how did you get so involved in yoga? Like, what's your story? Why did you come to core power? Why is yoga like your practice, your thing? How did you become an instructor? So the first yoga class I ever took was just like a YouTube channel video, Yoga Flow, and I think that's how a lot of people get started. Um, and I was kind of on and off. I really wasn't consistent with my practice too much. Um, but then I took a class for, it was at a community college. It was just a physical education requirement. And I fell in love with the teacher. I loved the setting of the class. I really felt like, you know, like one of those epiphany moments, like, whoa, this needs to be in my life. Yeah. And then I got a little bit more consistent with it. Um, I, I really hated my desk job. And I just decided that I wasn't gonna waste my life doing something that made me so miserable. So I Googled teacher training for yoga and core power popped up, it fit with my schedule. Um, I took one class and I signed up for teacher training. I just fell in love with the community um, and the program, it changed my life and now I'm a yoga teacher. I love that. I yeah. love that you like gave up everything to do yoga. I really did. I gave up a really stable job sure. that made me a good amount of money. Like a nine to five. Yeah. And I, you know, and my happiness was, it just wasn't worth it, so. How did you know, like, yoga was your thing? Like, did you try anything else? Did you play sports growing up? Did you I have a black belt in jujitsu. Did you know that? No, no, I never told you that. Yeah, I, I grew up doing jujitsu. I did ballet when I was really little and I hated it. I wasn't really a girly girl at all. Um, and I really actually wanted to quit when I was doing judo. I wanted to quit when I was a blue belt. And my dad was like, I didn't raise a quitter. And so he made me get my black belt, but I'm so happy he made me because that, I mean, it gave me a lot of confidence. Um, but I wasn't passionate about it. You know, yeah. I can't explain. What's the difference? Like, I know there's like vinyasa and then there's a bunch of other types of yoga. Yeah. What's like the I cannot name all the different types right. of yoga. There's like so many. Like There really is. And you should try all of them because there's going to be one that just speaks to you more than any others. Like for me, it's power vinyasa, but you know, there's yin, there's yoga sculpt. Um, it, you know, there is a uh, hatha, there's kundalini, um, there's different breathing techniques. I mean, it's a whole whole yeah. world of just different styles and techniques and and I feel like core power is it's a yoga class but you're also like really getting a workout like there's not one time I'm not sweating yeah well that and might be because of the heat too <laughs> yeah it's hot in here but also like you're constantly moving to the next thing it's not very like slow it's kind of like here you're here you're here you're here you're here right I think that's what I really like about Core Power too, is it's accessible to everyone. I mean, our, our Hot Power Fusion class is a little bit slower, or it's meant to be. Um, but yeah, we you know we, we love uh, Power Vinyasa, so that's what we really speak yeah. to. Yeah. Are you just a yoga instructor? Like, I am what else? only a yoga teacher. I also make mala beads, mala bead necklaces and bracelets. I made this little guy. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you make these, do you sell them on like Etsy or anything? I, I only take custom orders right now. Okay. But yeah, you can DM me. I'd be happy to make you one. I teach about two to four classes a day. I have um, one day a week off, but I mean, I don't mind. It's a grind. It is, but it doesn't feel like a job. Like I almost feel like I never call it going to work. I'm never like, I gotta go to work. I'll text you after work. I'm always like, I gotta teach. I'm in the studio. That's it really doesn't cool. feel like a job to me. That's really cool. Yeah, it's amazing. And yoga has never really been on, like something that's been on my mind. I've 
obviously seen things on social media where people are really into yoga or like I thought it was like an older person thing yeah I tried hot yoga a few times in high school and it really kicked my butt and I just couldn't handle living in a puddle of sweat for an hour mm -hmm. so I just thought that that was yoga and that was it but for whatever reason I thought I would come to core power yoga which was right down the street I tried a class and was immediately in love I just really loved how the first class you took it was C1 with Erin. Yeah. Oh, Erin is the studio manager at the Ferrex location. She's rad. She's she was she was so passionate about what she did, and that's really why I like Core Power because all of the instructors are so happy to be here, and you can feel it. Like immediately, Erin was just like. I was so touched by her because she was just so happy about her life. Like she's a yoga teacher in Fair Oaks, California, and was like one of the most happy people I've ever seen. So that was something that immediately attracted to me. And then also, I was kind of in a place at the time where I wasn't extremely happy and I just was kind of like lost in a way, especially for spirituality, like spiritual wise. And so, and even working out, I just didn't know what was making me happy at the time. And then yoga really made me just be in my head for one hour, like no distractions and just feeling my body and my mind and like getting everything aligned. And that's why I like yoga because you're not only getting a workout, but you're getting your mind right. So that's why I love yoga. That's why I practice yoga. I think it has a lot to do with like being spiritually in tune with yourself and your body. Don't you yes, think that you're yes. really in tune with your body? A thousand percent agree, yeah. First question. Should everyone be practicing yoga? Well, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and here's the thing. You don't, I think yoga can be intimidating, especially like you were talking about the Instagram yeah. stars. Like of, you, you think know, you have to come to class and do a handstand. And that's just not true. I mean, and maybe core power is not your studio. Go to another studio. Go to a local studio. Right. You know, like there's, there, there is a yoga for everyone. I can almost guarantee that there is a yoga for um, that, you know, weight lifter, bodybuilder type. There yeah. is, we have lots of men that come into the studio. It's a great, it's great for cross training. Like you're the perfect example of that. One of our other instructors here, she does CrossFit. She teaches at yeah. CrossFit and she does yoga. She teaches here. It's, it, you know, it's a really great compliment to other workouts, whether you golf, run, um, lift weights, whatever it is. And there's so many different styles. So maybe you're looking for something more challenging. Power vinyasa might speak to you. Maybe you're into acrobatics, do acro yoga. Right. You know, maybe you're into really slow meditative flows. Take yin. I just feel like there's a yoga for everyone. It's, it's it gives you so much mind body awareness. Mm -hmm. And I like to think about it as a treat, like it's self care. Take care of yourself. Take an hour a day to not be thinking about your kids or picking people, you know, do doing whatever you need to do, your commitments, your responsibilities. Absolutely. And I feel like yoga, it gives you that mind muscle connection, which is important for every aspect in every sport and every form of exercise. You need to be in tune with your body. It's important to be thinking about the muscles that you're using at the time that you're using them. And I think yoga has helped me tremendously, not even lying. I think my butt has grown <laughs> since I've done yoga. Yoga booty is a thing. It is. Yoga booty is a thing. We should it hashtag is. that. Trademark it. it. It's a thing. It I never, like, I squatted, I mean, tons and tons of weight, and I did all those workouts, and then it wasn't until I did yoga that I saw major booty gains. Yes, because all those lunges, which we'll get into that Or later. you're just stretching into your hips. I don't, like, there's a lot of movements you do in yoga where you can... Um, turn off muscles that you overuse and start working out the muscles you don't use. So I think yoga is extremely important to incorporate in anyone's routine. And Asia Vollmer asks, what are the benefits of yoga blocks and muscle rollers? The benefit of muscle rollers is essentially for the fascia in your body. Fascia is a really large, the largest connective tissue in your body that surrounds your muscles. Um, so whenever that's tight and for lack of a better word, just scrunched up, that's where you feel tension and pain. So when you roll, when you roll out those tight spots in your muscles, it um, circulates blood flow into your fascia and it helps to kind of smooth out your muscles. Um, yoga blocks. I love this question because I feel like these are not popular enough. People don't use them. I think it may have to do with people think like, it's like an ego thing, like if I yeah. use blocks, it means I'm not doing it right. 
Yo, I think blocks can modify your poses. They can um, enhance your poses, um, and or they could change the same pose into something really restorative. So for instance, bridge pose, where it's very active. Next question, where do you go once you feel like you're past the beginner stage? I've been doing yoga for a while now, but I feel like I'm stuck at an everyday normal space, pace. And if you have a consistent practice, that's gonna happen. It's just like with lifting weights. I mean, at the gym, I'm sure you have to constantly come up with new creative ways um, because you're not gonna get that same sweat. You know, if you're taking, for instance, um, a C1 every single day after a few weeks or a month, I mean, you're gonna be like, all right, what's next? I know that a studio isn't for everyone. Not everyone can afford to come to a studio right. um, or it's just not convenient. Some people just feel more comfortable practicing at home totally okay. Um, at home practices can be a little bit more challenging when it comes to stepping up your game a little bit um, because you might not know exactly what to do. So if you practice at a studio, whoever asked that question, um, talk to your teachers, take the next level. Um, I don't know if all studios are like Core Power where we have different levels of yoga, right. but if not, talk to your teacher. You know, Ask them, hey, what, what can I do to kind of up-level my practice? Um, Google retreats workshops there's like acro yoga workshops inversion workshops you can learn handstands if you want to incorporate floating um to yeah. the top of your you know jump backs and stuff like that um if you're at home i would try gaia.com g-a-i and then 108tv.com okay. um i think it's like 10 bucks a month something like that but they have different styles of yoga it's the best way to practice at home, there's omstars.com. I mean, there's a lot of different online yoga um, tools that you have. So if you're at home, you can still up-level your practice. You just have to kind of find different methods. There's the Kodi app. Have you heard of Kodi app? No. Oh my gosh, Kodi app. So you download it onto your phone and they have different packages. So um, vinyasa flow packages, inversions and balances. They have like weightlifting stuff and you can buy the packages and then um, it kind of gives you like steps to work up to something. So if it's handstands, you'll take like 10, 15 classes and at the end of it, you should be able to do a handstand. Yeah, yeah, totally. Always tools, always options. So next question, why is yoga so important? I think you get what you're looking for. If it's stretching, you warm up your muscles. If you have, that's a something, if yoga is something you're using for cross training, um, you warm up your muscles in certain parts, you activate certain muscles and parts of your body um, to really fire it up and be able to move into whatever goal you're working towards, whether you're a runner, a swimmer, you're a cyclist, you lift weights, whatever that is. Um, as well as the mind-body connection, friends, you need to have body awareness. If you're into fitness, if you're into working out, you know how important this is. I don't have to preach it. You need to know what's going on in your body. Um, and the importance of breath. Oh my gosh, we take it for granted. Like, yeah, you breathe all the time. You don't realize it, but there's different breathing techniques for meditation, how to breathe so you have more stamina, how to breathe to calm your mind. Like breath, stretching, mind-body connection is if I had to just make it really sweet and short would be oh the top gosh. three reasons why. You are so right because before yoga, I didn't even think about like breathing. Like I thought I just breathed, like I was natural. I didn't even have to think about it, but no, like most of us aren't like, we have very short breaths because we aren't thinking about it. But like the power of a deep breath mm -hmm. is crazy. It's I, delicious. That first breath you take when you get into child's pose or wherever you're at on your mat and the teacher says, breathe in, take a big exhale out. You're like, oh, yes, I needed that. Yeah, I just yeah. like during the day, I'll just take a huge deep breath and it feels like I'm just resetting myself. Oh my gosh. And then um, and in yoga, they remind you to stick with your breath all throughout class. And how many of us during our workouts don't even think about breathing and it's even more important when you're working out to have that inhale and exhale through every movement because your oxygen has so much to do with your muscles and you have to be and it's easy to forget to breathe when you're doing something difficult right so maybe you're lifting really you know a high heavy set of weights yeah. or you're doing some crazy balancing posture that's when i tend to stop breathing i'm like yeah and then i'm like oh okay yeah so the next question what are some of your favorite poses I like hip stuff. I'm really into um, hip, opening up the hips. Um, 
in case you guys didn't know this, females hold a lot of our emotions in our hips. I like to be in tune with my feelings in my body, so I really like um, a lot of hip stretches. I like half pigeon, double pigeon, dancer's pose when it comes to balancing. So now that we've finished the Q&A, we're gonna go right into a workout. We're gonna show you some of Nikki's favorite poses. We're gonna show you some of my favorite moves that you can do with weights. I've talked on my blog so many times that I love the workout yoga with weights. It is so amazing. You're doing strength training. You're doing a lot of core work, a lot of cardio. You're getting everything. So I'm gonna show you some things you can do at home with just like three pound dumbbells, five pound dumbbells, and you get a killer workout. And then we're obviously going to break down every exercise. So stay tuned. Break down on Sun B and our yoga sculpt. And we have this favorite class. Um, I'm gonna get you started in down dog. So reach your heels towards your mat. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Send your tail <coughs> up and back. And then pull your shoulders away from your ears. Grip them out with your fingertips so you don't have any pressure on your wrists. Inhale, lift your right leg up high. Exhale, step your foot in between your hands. Check and make sure that your feet are on two separate tracks. Inhale, crescent lunge, reach your arms up overhead. Breathe on your own here. Stack your knee right over your right ankle. Lift through your back heel. You can always drop your left knee down if you need more stability or support. Bring your tailbone straight down. Your back is your priority here. Soften your shoulders down, inhale. Exhale, warrior two, spin open to the camera. Stack your right knee over your right ankle. So you wanna press your weight towards the pinky toe side of your right foot here, really open up your front knee. And then press through the knife edge of your back foot, almost like you're trying to rip apart your mat and also squeeze your mat together at the same time. Soften your shoulders down, take your gaze to your middle finger, fire up your arms. So if I was to press down on your arms, it wouldn't move. Inhale, reverse warrior. Flip your right palm up like you're high-fiving the back wall, yes. So Amanda's um, a pro yogi, so she's taking a bind behind her back, but you can always press your back hand into your back leg as well, whatever is more comfortable for you. So lunge back into this knee right here and find a stretch in your right side body. If it's comfortable for your neck, you can take your gaze up. Breathe in. Exhale, high to low plank chaturanga. I'm gonna have you pause at high plank, actually. So step into a high plank, one long line of energy from the crown of your head to your heels. Inhale, shift forward to your tippy toes. Good, exhale, low plank, bend your elbows up to a 90 degree angle. Yes, flip to the tops of your feet. Inhale, upward dog. See how her legs are engaged, they're not touching the mat. Broaden through your shoulders. Exhale, downward facing dog, push the mat away. There you have it, your sun be flow. Now, Nikki is going to show me how to do the sun beef sequence, but with weights. So the fact that we're putting weights, this is the whole point of yoga sculpt, is you're also now sculpting your muscles while stretching, while doing yoga, while getting a yoga boot. <laughs> I'm gonna go over um, safety with weights really fast. I know that's not the, that's not the most fun. Um, but in your halfway lifts, if you're using your weights in your halfway lifts, bend your knees and stack your joints over your weights. Anytime you're punching your weights up, stack your weights right over your joints. Um, when you're in warrior two, you wanna keep a micro bend in your elbows for your elbow joints. And anytime you're moving through one pose to another, flow your weights through your heart center. So for instance, crescent lunge, exhale to warrior two, run your weights through heart center and then open up to the sides. Inhale, crescent lunge, punch your weights up, breathe here. Your alignment is on fire. You can always invite a small bend into this back knee just to flatten your back here and reach your hip points up. Her weights are stacked right over her joints, perfect. So from here, you can do narrow rows. Weights in front of you, inhale. Exhale, reach your weights inwards towards your armpits. Yep, and you can switch it up here. You can take your arms out wide like you're doing pull-ups. Awesome, and you can always drop to your back knee if you need more stability while you're doing this. Still, still um, a great workout. And so your exercise in Warrior Two, you have options. You can bring your weights in as you keep this front lunge, or you can extend your legs straight as you lift up and then lunge back into your knee, and then you switch your weights from side to side. Keep your elbows pinned by your sides. Remember to breathe. 
You got it. Inhale to star pose. Burst your hands up. Toes out, heels in. Exhale to a horse. So squat low, reach your tailbone down, gather your weights at your chest. Awesome. So her tailbone is straight down. She doesn't have that Friday night booty. And stack your knees right over your ankles. So you can do oblique dips here. These are my favorite. Take your weights however it's more secure with your hands. Inhale at the center. Exhale, dip towards the mirror or the back wall. Inhale back to center. So you can also do oblique twists from this side. Bring your weights to heart center or into your stomach rather. And twist from side to side, take micro movements. And keep leveled hips. You're only rotating your upper body. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. If you wanna see more videos like this, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and let me know what you liked about it in the comments below. And most importantly, where can we find you, Nikki? I work at Core Power Yoga in Fair Oaks and in Roseville. Um, my only day off is Wednesday, so you can check out uh, our schedule on corepoweryoga.com um, or you can download the app and look out for my name. All the teachers here are awesome. Um, if you're looking for something more private, um, you'd rather start off just one-on-one, -on -one, um, you can email me. My email is on my Instagram bio, yoga with Nikki, um, and we can set up a time to connect. I love, love, love Core Power Yoga, and I believe for you guys, there are a path you can take, seven days free. Absolutely, your first week is free. You really have nothing to lose. Come hang out with us and do yoga. I hope you enjoy this video. See you next time, bye.